actually I was in denial for quite a long time because in my mind I always thought that Elise would live at home with us until um, she kept getting bigger and I wasn't getting any stronger. I thought I was going to be able to keep him, keep him at home with me until he was 21 but his behaviors were too aggressive and I couldn't deal with them anymore. I have a chronic disease process so I uh... I'm disabled and it's hard to keep up with, which is hard for Kay because I can't do the walks and the physical activity that she enjoys. He'd run out right in front of the house, pull his pants down and sit down on the middle of the street. And he would not get up for anybody or anything. Sometimes he got mad and then he tried to hit the babysitter and sometimes he tried to hurt me, but I, he's bigger than me and then I, I can't take care of him. Grabbing a hold of me and kicking and hitting me and anything and everything that he could think of to express the way he felt because he couldn't communicate. It became sort of difficult to care for her, lifting her in and out of her chair. I almost dropped her one time because I was by myself. My husband was away at a business trip and I realized that I wasn't really able to do that anymore and that was putting her at risk. We were all very, very nervous. I mean, it's very scary. But uh, Joe and I are older parents uh, and uh, it was a matter that how long are you going to be around for them? I'm 65 years old. Uh, when I'm gone, who's going to look after Cindy? I mean, I loved having her at home because then I knew everything was just the way it needed to be. But, you know, there's a certain point when parents have to realize, or maybe I had to realize, that I really couldn't do it. I couldn't do everything anymore. I needed some help. It takes a, a little bit of adjusting to... to to know that your child is not normal in the sense that she's going to progress at a normal rate and you want to do everything you can to uh, to, to get them moving <clears throat> for, for a while you hold this uh, belief that if you do enough things that sooner or later she's going to get past this and that she'll be uh, uh, functioning at a normal level uh, and then after you uh, uh, spend some time with that you realize that this is going to be a, a lifelong process. So it's essential that she build herself a kind of a support web so that when we're gone that she has, uh, she's not totally lost. Well, I mean, the network of support for people with developmental disabilities in our community is looking at the whole person and all the supports that individual needs and all the gifts that person brings to our community and how can we help bring out the gifts and support the needs and have that person be as valued a member of our community as possible. So there's support for housing and residential op opportunities, there's vocational options, there's recreation activities, there's mental health services, there's support for children and families. Uh, there's actually there's just a wide array of supports for people with developmental disabilities in our community. Your child has all the same needs as every other child and they've grown up in your home, they're ready to move on to the next step. You want them to be healthy and safe, you want them to engage in the community, you want all those same things. So the main options, so the foster home would be run by a private individual who opens a home to serve people with developmental disabilities um, in a family type of setting. The next level of care after a foster home uh, might be a group home where some of the group homes would form around a, a particular need that a group of individuals might have. We have medical group homes that would serve the medical needs of individuals with uh, more specialized challenges. They may have nurses on staff, they may have you know, specially trained staff to deal with um, whatever the care needs of that individual are. We also have group homes that specialize in behavioral needs. You know, if someone has unique behavioral challenges, there may be specialized trained staff to address those challenges in the, in the home setting. Or we also have generalized group homes that yeah, would serve just the general population. Hmm. <laughs> All right, fish is coming to get me. <laughs> and then supported living, it'd be people living in the community, in their own homes or apartments, 
the care provider would come to them or how it's get whether it's a supported living option or a foster home option or a group home option, you're still wanting the same things. You're wanting your child to grow and progress and become independent and have the supports they need to be healthy. The foster care is smaller, it's more of a tight family. This is Erica, and this is myself, Halina, and this is Becky, and this is Cindy right here, and Michelle. And we are the... Three, four masters. Four masters. One, two, three, four, five. Five masters. <laughs> All right. I've known Erica for 20 years. Her mom put together, before she passed away, a circle of friends. And so those people, till this day, are still a part of Erica's life. The whole thing about her moving into a house kind of came from the circle of friends and her aunt. And we all had kind of come together and decided that it was time for Erica to make a change. I live a, at a, um, my own apartment, and um, it didn't work out. She did that for a couple of years. And it was a disaster, pretty much. She um, she ate all the wrong foods. She could not keep a job, and she made friends with people who took advantage of her. How did you feel about living in that um, apartment? We talked about it's kind of scary living there all. It by was yourself. a little scary, but Michelle had to hit bottom first before she asked for help. It was awful. I mean, the rock bottom. I mean, like, sometimes you go days without food sometimes because you don't have any money. Sometimes is the truth. But she had, and, she had resources for money, but she gave a lot of it away to her friends. Yeah, my friends, yes. So it wasn't that she didn't, didn't have, have money, money, she didn't use money wisely. Yeah. Knowing this is the best thing for her and getting her to agree with it, those are two different things. And you can't force a person. Becky had a lot of fears when she first went into a uh, foster home, but it, it just went beautifully. This one, this one, and then, wait, stand back. I'll just... <laughs> Thank you, Becky. All right. You guys are good helpers. Thanks. You're welcome. Well, this is my friend Cindy right here. She's my best friend.